That's fantastic. What's your name, sir? James in the green suit. I love it. Did you, did you win the uh, Augusta National? What happened? The super villain suit. All right, you're the Joker. Hello, one and all. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. Harmontown is now in session. It's good to be back. It feels like it's been a long, long time. Let's bring out our Game Master because I love him and adore him. Let's bring out Spencer Crittenden. What up, Spencer? Oh, yeah. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling couched. I got a couch. You got, yeah. You've upgraded from, uh, from chair to couch now. Oh, yeah. All right. I need it for my hip. I'm 62. <laughs> Are you, is your hip hurting you? Oh, yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> or aren't we all? Yeah. Speaking of dying, let's bring out the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. You sound like you might be a little under the weather. Uh, yeah, I get sick like once every two years. I guess this is it. <laughs> Stayed up a couple too too many days and just caught something, I guess. Don't use this microphone. I might be playing it up a little bit. <laughs> you know you, how you can do you that? You sound like a Hall's Mentholiptus commercial from the 90s. You know, like you can't. Nothing can penetrate this stuffy those. If you're 100 percent healthy, you can't fake like sounding sick. But if you're like five percent sick, you can crank it up to like 70 percent easy. <laughs> you just have to like it's a, it's actually a matter of just not doing anything. You just like just don't. You just don't. Uh, you just do less, and is, then you is, sound real sick. Is it the kind of sickness that you can enjoy? Cause you, you have like tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich and some hot cocoa, and you watch TV, or is it is it a bummer? It's kind of it's, look. I'm not in any physical pain. It's the kind of sick that's a manifestation of the psychological misery I'm in. It's self-imposed. My what, therapist what? and I are making some real breakthroughs, but unfortunately, it's like realizations of how fucked up I am, and uh, you know, like she's really getting through to me. What? But what is the? Uh, what's the? Uh the headlines of your just story. like how I'm a like a creature of denial, like how like you know just kind of like stuff that I don't know. It doesn't sound as profound when you repeat it, but like you know, I've been not finishing this script for like weeks. So every week I go in there, and she's like the one person I don't have to lie to. That's not gonna behoove me to lie to. So I was like, I could just go in and go, nope, nope, I didn't turn it in again. And instead of being like, oh, I'm almost done or whatever. And, you know, so it's been kind of a case study in like, you know, just the process and how it gets hung up and blocked and fucked up and like what's going on in my head, like how I managed to make like my process difficult. Um, but this has got to be the last time I ever do this. I'm not doing it no more. I'm not writing anything by myself anymore because <clears throat> I can't do it. There's something wrong with me. Like that's what that's what we figured out. And the thing, she's like, she's like, yeah, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> she's like, I think you got to admit that there's something uncontrollable. You know, like that's what you have to do in situations like this. Like you got to treat it like an addiction. Like you're basically addicted to fucking up your deadlines. Like you, you are like, like you, you will have a thought in your head. This is what I thought was interesting because I think you can apply this to anything. And I'm sure it's like AA talk too. It's like, but it's like the idea that you can, whatever you're up against, you know, the thi the, the, if there are some things that you can't control, some thoughts you can't control. Like, and so procrastination or things like, like there's some, some, some things where like the, 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 the reason why you keep doing the same fucked up shit over and over again is because the thought is in your head already. It's not, you don't get a choice. You don't, you're not there at the point where you're making the, choice to think you know haven't you ever like 
everybody's got something, whether right. you're a smoker or a drinker or, you know, I, I think it's more profound when it's not something like that, but it helps to use that stuff as metaphorically when you realize like, oh, look at your procrastination as like a, a th as like a cigarette because what are you getting out of it? I don't know. I was like, I've been puzzling through it for weeks going like, what is it? What am I addicted to the shame? Am I like afraid to be happy? And all that stuff sounds so cornball. And then it was finally like, she's like, she's like, look, it doesn't matter. Like, it's like the, the answer, it doesn't matter if you get, if you figure that shit out or not, you're kind of addicted to trying to figure shit out. First of all, like that's part of the process is that you, 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 but I think what you have to accept is that there's like a wall of ice in your brain that like is there before you choose it. I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but that, 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 that like, that's the profound thing is that, is that it's already there. And, and the, and the, and the only way to uh, do anything about it is you got to accept that, okay, I'm going to be thinking this fucked up thought, Bef way before I ever even, it's there, it's like a time traveler. It's just there before, it's, it's pre-fucked up, whatever your relationship, that if you always fuck up your relationships, if you don't have, if, or whatever way you're self-destructive, it's, it's like, like think of these things that always, you, you always seem to do. Stop waiting for you to like figure out how to do it differently with an epiphany or something and just accept that, you know, first things first, like I always do this. I'm always thinking this before I even decide I'm thinking it. And, and I like, I'll even deny that I'm thinking of it or I'll think of something else. Cause until you admit that, and then, you know, that language is familiar until you accept that you've got this problem. Like you can't do the thing that you need to do, which is take contrary action, which is just the equivalent of like a fucking sit up. But you kind of have uh, like two addictions, then, don't you? Because like you, you're I ain't got no addictions. You, <laughs> if you're addict, if you have a procrastination addiction, you also have an addiction to creating stuff. Like, like that's a huge part of who you are. Well, I'd like to call that bluff as soon as possible. I mean, I like making stuff. Yeah, but you I like, like making like, stuff I don't have to make, though. Like, well, I don't. Oh well, yeah, wouldn't we all? We, we'd all yeah. like to have created a thing that we didn't have to work hard on. Like, I, I would like to have a book. I, I'm, I'm never going to sit down and write one because I'm, yeah. I'm a lazy, terrified, bad writer. Oh yeah. man, Jeff, you gotta get a ghostwriter. I'd read your book. By It'd be ghost? all your cool stories. What, what if I actually got a real ghost? Oh, that'd be great. I know a guy. <laughs> the I'll, Exorcist. I'll, go, I'll ghostwrite your book as a ghost right now. Oh, chapter one. <laughs> oh, room full of dicks. I can't wait to suck them. That's problematic Oh, now. ghostwriter. <laughs> uh, I got you. Uh, <laughs> it's me, Dan. I died. <laughs> Just to do this bit. Don't go in the West Wing. It stinks. <laughs> I ate myself to death. Uh, my body doesn't stink. It's uh, the food. I don't know. What's, why, why, what are you trying to add on to that for? He's so, selling past the clothes. How many current like, deadlines do you have? Like, I, I, how many projects? I got them down to like, I'm going to count them. Like, I got one. It's this thing that I've been kvetching about for the last couple weeks. Um, and, uh, it was truly due today. It's like the pro all these projects, like they always have, they're all, they're always be like a guy who's like, it's just the fucking, it's the saddest thing. Like I, this is a look back at my life and I go like, oh, these poor people that like, that I get permission from, you know, and just go like, oh man, can I have one more day? And like, yeah, man, it's all good. I'm like, oh, you're such a, you're such a good guy. I'm like. <laughs> I was just trying to go back through my life and go like, how many of them get rewarded for this patience? Like, should they just come over to my house and punch me? W weren't you better like, when you had like a, they a, 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 a Stuart Kornfeld that, that would just yell at you and say, where is it, where is it, where is it? I don't know it? if he got more or less for his where is it, where is it. I don't know. Jack Rapke was like, was like, you know, I the, the thing that I remember, I mean, it was just, but I, I still didn't, like I still just shit out Monster House at the end of it and like gave it to him because, but it was like, but I remember him going like, like the I don't know like the third time he had to call me. And the then Stuart it, or Jack, Rapke at uh, Image Movers, and I was writing Monster House. This is twenty years ago, but it still sticks out in my head that he he was because he was just like old school Hollywood and like fuck was every other word. Is such a it was like really like interesting guy. 
Um, like, like, I'm sorry, I mean that. Like, it's just like, like, it's just like everything was fucking this and fucking that. And hey, listen, I got it. Um, uh, and then he got like, I just remember him going like, uh, like I, I told him like a third time, like, yeah, I'm not quite done yet. I'm still working on something, but I just kind of whatever. And there's just this long silence and he goes like, all right, well, I'll tell you what, fucking Dan, uh, at this point, uh, not going to bother calling you anymore because there's no fucking credibility here. So I'm like, that's all I remember. I was, I was like, damn, no credibility. <laughs> Shit, I can go get a sandwich now. <laughs> Wait, really that, take that, my that time didn't light this. a fire under your ass? <laughs> no, it just made me feel real bad. But you still finished it. <sighs> kind not, of? Not really. Did you see that fucking thing? What is it? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like the first 20 pages is great, and then it's like... Right. It's probably not even great anymore because it's like, oh, whoa, you want to have sex with that Girl Scout? That's that that aged well. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids ordering, are arguing over who gets to. <laughs> is is, is Deadless one of these things that you're working on? Nah, I mean that's a that, I wouldn't call that a deadline necessarily. That's like an active project that I'm very excited about. I'm not like there's nobody that's like you're fucking me over. I so wait, okay, so I'm counting the one thing, and then I do think. Like, I just got a bunch of shit off, like, one, two, three things off my plate. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I, I, think, I think that's truly it. And you only have 50,000 more episodes of Rick and Morty to write. Which is, no, Rick and Morty is, like, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's, like, it's, it's, it's a healthy process now, you know? Like, it's, it's like, Rick and Morty's, like, you know, we're, it, 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 it it's, 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 it's fine. Like I, right. I, that's the job that I want. That's the job that I signed the deal to do. And the, the, that, as soon as I got that contract, I was like, okay, let's start wrapping up all of these other d- dalliances. And there was just like 50 of them. Cause I, because like, what are you supposed to do? You don't, you don't, you don't, they, 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 there's no, I mean, look, I'm one of the luckiest writers in Los Angeles in the, in the TV industry. You've got to be one of the 1% luckiest uh, in 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 an in a, in a field that if you're represented in paying your rent writing that those those people represent like t- top whatever percent of the population of the planet in terms of luxury, in terms of like you know the amount of work you have to do for the amount of money you get, and then I'm I'm up in the upper echelon of those people because I make like I'll get a check from community sometimes, and I'll get a check from 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 this or that. And it's still like until I got that Rick and Morty deal, I was like, well, yeah, but how am I going to retire? And then you get it's like I guess that segues into this WGA thing. Like I guess I got I got everybody firing their agent. Uh, okay, good. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been on the road and, and and not totally hip to that. Like, what 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 is the deal with the WGA deal? Packaging, Jeff. It's all about packaging. You know about packaging. I'm packaging right now. Right. <laughs> We're all packaging. I really can't speak with authority uh, uh, on I it, can't either. Go ahead, but, go ahead. No, I don't know. Packaging is uh, when uh, the agents basically cut themselves further into the pie for making deals with multiple talents and parties. So they, they tell, they say, hey, literary agent, like, we'll get this writer, and hey, TV agent, and hey, TV actor, we'll get you. And also, we'll get 10% more of everyone's money you know, of everyone's deals for packaging. So they get 10%, you know, on top of the money they already get from the individual parties. And I'm probably way off. But uh, that's a big part of it because it's just them, you know, cutting cutting a huge chunk more of the money yeah. than is, they're already being paid to get. <laughs> and so, yeah, the WGA is, is striking. This guy chunks of money. <laughs> or carving? you anti-carving? Um, so who, who does that affect uh, the worst? The uh, the, the WGA, the writers, yeah. because they no longer have the same connections and and uh, you know there's, pro- there's probably obviously this is a union of very uh, smart people that like to type a lot. So there's a lot of invective, a lot of like Patrick Henry, give me my quill or give me my <laughs> my sword kind of stuff online that'll make you. I mean, I I. I really, I don't know how you, I, once it's 97, 95%, you know, turning out in a vote, which it's like, I'm just going to defer to my better uh, crafts people who have thought about this more. And uh, I did talk to a couple of um, 
colleagues and said, like, look, can you explain this to me? And like, because if all this is, is that we that, that times are hard all over, that Rome is burning. And so everyone's just starting to grab each other and shake each other down, you know, and the package is just a cluster of money that we're like, okay, now let's worry about that. Now that it's not the cocaine eighties anymore. And like, there's not money just like everywhere. But, and then someone was like, no, 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 it's not, it's, it's, it's lack of transparency and stuff like that. And they kind of walked me through it. And I took my, you know, my, my agents took me out to dinner and, uh, uh, there's such a sweet, sweet table of little cherubs. They're human beings. They didn't, they didn't choose, uh, this stuff. They don't run their, their agency or the industry for the last 30 years. And they're, they are a little broken hearted that writers are such, uh, we're so dramatic when we, <laughs> when we really set our mind to something like they're just, they're feeling like very bad. You're, I saying, think it, you're saying writers are dramatic? Yeah. I think it's very, I always thought it was very profound. I mean, I, I, that, that like we have this industry out here where, you know, things that in any other part of the world might be just too frivolous for there to be such compartmentalized and industrialized like division of labor. And uh, because even, you know, it, 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 that we developed these breeds and that it's, I always, you know, I, I'm so thankful that there's this like breed of industry person that does just every part of the job of working as a writer that I, I would rather kill myself than do, which I mean, notably just like selling me like telling people that i'm good and that i should have a job i would if i i would never i would die of starvation before i did that i would never be like well i'm a pretty good writer think uh think you should maybe what are you doing over here like a star trek reboot like look i've been i've been i've been i've been loving star trek maybe you've seen some of my work here's something you can read like i don't know if they're going pretty good like i would just hey, like uh, now nah, i'm going to uh, i did i didn't know that john travolta was a writer <laughs> John Travolta, what are you working on right now? You got a you got a new script for us? I, the, 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 um, I'm working on the uh, 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 tell all about the the set of Broken Arrow. Ooh. I got to say, Broken Arrow is not my favorite John Travolta movie. Hey, but... well, uh, well, why don't you uh, take a flying hose on a rubber hose? What, I'm, I'm sounding like Bob Goldthwait. <laughs> Uh, what did they say on Welcome Back, Cotter? Take a take a sit on a rubber hose, or take a put uh, your, up your nose with a up rubber your hose? nose with a rubber hose. Right. Thank you, thank you. I always say up your butt with a coconut, but that wasn't from Welcome Back, Cotter. No, I don't think you could say that back then. Yeah, you couldn't say up your butt. <laughs> up your, they wouldn't say up your nose if they could say up your butt. Right. They're like, we got to put it somewhere. And they're like, you get it. The nose is like the ass. <laughs> I always thought happy days when they would say sit on it. That, sit that, on it seems well, almost worse than up your nose. Yeah. That, sit on it. What am I supposed what? to sit on? Probably like, your dick, your right? Dick. I'm assuming either. Well, also, uh, you know, they, they were in the, they were usually in the men's room when, when yeah. they told somebody to sit on it. And honestly, like, no, like, like, regardless of what you're sitting on, it's probably going up your ass. I mean, there's no, there's, there's really no getting around that. I can't you're, believe I mean, that. Uh, who, who made uh, Happy Days? Who was the creator on that one? Gary was, Marshall. Was, was it Gary Marshall? I had his office at Paris. Paramount. Oh yeah, yeah. My office was. Oh, scary. Th that, that was in your uh, your eccentric days when you would show up at Paramount in a fucking bathrobe, like one of the Wachowski brothers or whatever, right? Yeah, I guess sometimes I do that. Then I get fired. But like, I mean, sometimes you got to edit on a Saturday. I'm not gonna put pants on. <laughs> I shot that Daryl video in that office. It was Gary Marshall's did you office. Really, did you really show up to Paramount just in pajamas and slippers and stuff? Yeah, I would go there. Like, like, yeah, like usually, like, like when it was like in the thick of things, when it was like, oh, you got to work on the weekends, which I would. Right. But it was like, oh, I got to go in on the weekend, and I'm just going to sit and pull into Paramount's lot, go into an edit bay, and sit there for six hours and ship an episode. Well, who can't? Yeah, I'm sure, I'll wear. My I, I saw you in a, in a Me Wednesday in the last episode of this. You came out in your little Jimmy Jams. Yeah, that was really good. Oh, all right. So we got we do have some uh, some items to go over. Like I I, I feel like this one's kind of urgent because for fans of my workout, uh, <laughs> I they made they are a, a couple days ago, a couple workouts ago. We were talking about my coyote problem, and I I I had ordered this ghillie suit, like uh, which is where you look like a swamp thing, and. It came and I, I like I, I wore it during my workout and stuff. But I was like, you know, I was talking before. Wait, that wait, came. hang on. Can I hit pause here for a second? Why, why did you get a ghillie suit for your coyote problem? 
my feeling w- at the time I was a little drunk, but I was like, I <laughs> thought I was like, maybe like wear it. And like, it was based on a threat I had made to the coyotes. <laughs> while really drunk. Like, I did, like, a Kevin Spacey monologue to the coyotes for, like, 20 minutes. So you, you verbally to coyotes in your backyard or just to the universe itself? Me, like, I did it under my breath, but in a way that if my neighbors wanted to listen, like, they would be alarmed. So it, it was kind of a... Because uh, I was clearly talking. It was a me. taxi driver, you talking yeah. to me kind of thing, but it's I was for like, two coyotes. Like. Yeah, I, I was, like, projecting like this. Like, I was like... Cause I just I was just finished shooting some slingshot like clay biodegradable clay balls into the wait these things are getting so aggressive. Wait, Jeff. so you, you've already enlist, uh, invested in anti coyote weaponry? Yeah, yeah. I got like this crazy slingshot. Right, but, but and I was like, like I was a like rocket kind of thing. But I still, you know, I was like, like so, and I shot it and like like did, you know and, and into the into the area. Were you where, shooting at actual animals that you saw? Or no, you I mean, I, if I I couldn't see them, but. I wouldn't aim at him. It wouldn't be my objective to hit him. Because I don't think that would do any good. I would rather just be a nuisance to them and scare them. And, and the concern would be they're, they're going to come and eat Nigel or what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, eventually. that they're Because I feel like they're a, uh, they, they wouldn't be two feet from my back door if they weren't already in some trouble. You know, so it's it's a it's a tragedy for them. I think but they, they, they probably just smell the pheromones or the the dog food or whatever. That they they just know that there's pets in the house. I know, but it's not like a natural like it's not like a natural thing for coyotes. This is a recent thing. I think it's again going back to the fires that we had. And I think like there was a big migration down. There's been like a lot of aggressive coyote stuff. And I'm just saying like I have to imagine that all of these coyotes that are like so active in Las Feliz right now that they're they're up against it and that and they're getting very aggressive and what i worry about is a combination of their aggression and like if they're starving like them getting kind of loopy or like like a ha- like a you know like abandoned pups or whatever like i don't want to know the shit's going to hit the fan if like some You've seen these like crazy coyotes like yeah. b- broad daylight r- like one that was just that's just like yeah, Paul, Paul Rust and Leslie Arfin's uh, little dog got eaten, like, and I heard it happen. It was fucking nuts. Jesus. Yeah, well, p- put a pin in that. That's awful. You heard it. Put a pin in that. And their other dog, which, which, which is a golden doodle like yours, like Harvey, uh, watched it happen, and they're like, he was never the same again. Like, he, he was fucking absolutely went insane while watching his little friend get, get yeah, murdered by a pack yeah. of coyotes. Because, I mean, Harvey can't even handle watching a fucking cartoon about a deer <laughs> without losing his shit. So Harvey, actually... Harvey just will I'll walk in, and he'll lay on his back and then pee on my shoe. Nah, come on. He doesn't pee that much. Um, the uh, So, yeah, I'm just worried. It happened once. That's enough. I am worried about a, like, juvenile, hunger-starved, heat-stroked, like, like fucking incel coyote. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> on, a, on, a comp, on a speedball high of nothing to lose. A, and <laughs> a, he's riding a lime scooter. He's fucking coming down. <laughs> Griffith Park Boulevard. And he's pissed about the Szechuan sauce. He's like, <laughs> and just like, like either like just just trying, just like I'm going for broke. I mean, life finds a way, and like and, and like they're what I'm worried about is the failure of that plan, even more than the success of it. That that like an injured kind of sick coyote landing in my yard and then needing help from other coyotes or just freaking out because it's like I'm trapped. It would be trapped in there. And if I was out if I was out and it was like 3 p.m. and the doggy door was unlocked and there's a coyote trapped in my backyard, Nigel's a fucking idiot. Like he he thinks that skunks are are party favors. Like he's just like, yay, free skunk candy. You know like <laughs> Like he has, just, he, has he been skunked a lot? Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. he got skunked like twice in the first like two weeks of of of, of yeah. my relationship with Cody. Dogs, was, dogs don't learn about skunks. They, they you'd think that once bitten, twice shy, but they fucking don't. They just say, oh, a skunk again. Harvey understands. Harvey's got the the got the the the, the, the whatever genes in him where he's like he hangs back twenty yards and barks and goes like skunk 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 and Nigel's just like like a torpedo. 
and just and then he just like but like if if Nigel gets out of bed and starts barking and running downstairs, I panic and run because last time that happened, I made it as far as the kitchen and he's coming back in the doggy door going <laughs> with like fucking mucus shooting out of his face and the whole house immediately smelling like yeah. uh like not it does not smell as much like weed. Uh, no, it's, it's, it smells like uh, like poison. Like I, I had a skunk apparently explode on my doorstep one time, <laughs> and my place like you couldn't even breathe in my place. For it's like in a, your a, shit a, forever. A, a month. Shit you have to throw away like yeah. like like even just curtains and stuff. It just gets in it. And uh, never there goes was away. Uh, at my new place. Uh, there were there was a family of skunks. There was a mama and a papa and some babies, and they're adorable. They're so cute. And we just stood there. I, I came home at like midnight or 1 a.m. And there was just a Mexican standoff. <laughs> they just stood in front of my door for a half hour. And I wasn't going anywhere. They weren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do? You can't, you, you can't like, shoo them off. I clap, I clap my hands. Yeah? Was, <laughs> it usually makes them go away. Like I've, I've had a couple showdowns with a skunk where they're like, I don't want to do this anymore than you do. I thought you were going to do a skunk clapping hands rap. Oh, because clapping. I was like, what? I was trying to figure out what. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> that was a skunk clapping hands rap. Did you guys see that Scotty Bowers documentary, the secret Hollywood uh, guy? Yeah. He, he feeds his skunks. He's got, it's like he li- lives yeah. somewhere here, and he like... He puts out extra cat food for the skunks, and they just come running right away, like they're like they're just like waiting for him to put the food out. And then they, I mean, that's what it looks like in the documentary. I'm like, I wonder if that's do those skunks not spray? They don't. If, if they feel comfortable, they they don't they don't like get up on your shit. But uh, if a dog comes go like comes over and snarls at them, they're gonna put their butthole right on your yeah. face, and that, that's that's the end of that. So. This is why I bring this up is because a couple workouts ago, I'm talking about the coyote problem and I'm like, okay, yeah, that Spencer and Steve are ordering me like an airsoft gun or whatever. Like we're, we're getting equipment, you know, I just want to be a, a, I just want to scare these coyotes into having a larger berth around my uh, yard. And, uh, and then I go, I go, look, and I, and I said, in case anybody out there has got their ears on to the live stream and you're like, Ooh, you just, you want to be mean to animals what's what are they doing wrong i was like really no i've tried everything i've tried you know noise and don't tell me shake a coffee can at them with rocks in it like i've tried everything they're getting really aggressive they don't care anymore and dave klein said have you tried praying (laughs) and i and i was like you got me no i have not tried praying that's true like before i go up in my ghillie suit and so then I did this thing where I'm like, I, cause I'm like, I look, I, I you know, uh, fu- functionally I may as well be an atheist in terms of like, I don't, I don't do nothing for, uh, for, for no, no deities. I don't, I don't pay nothing forward, but, uh, but culturally, I don't know, psychologically, like I'm, I'm like, I don't, I, 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 I'm, I'm panicking even talking about it right now. Like I have this inborn, like Midwestern, uh, if you blaspheme, like you, God's just gonna like just 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 seize the opportunity to prove he exists just by fucking like taking one of your legs out, um, and uh, and so I was like, okay, if I'm doing this, I got to be real serious about it. So I very sincerely. You know, I it would w- it made it very complicated because I was like, no, I sound like a dick, like I'm like and all this stuff. But I did went through this like prayer where I prayed for the coyotes. To, I was like, God, take to, you know, if you want, if you want to fill these coyotes' hearts with the desire to relocate, <laughs> whatever it is, like like don't don't smite them. If it's if it's a choice between doing nothing and smiting, I I'll deal with them. Like I don't want anything smitten for me. <laughs> Um, it's it's smoting. So I don't want. I don't want nothing smote, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't be smoting. But wait, wait, I'm smoting. What? what it, I be sm- am I? Am I interrupting? Oh, uh, uh, why the ghillie suit? Why did you get a ghillie suit? It was part of the threat he made. Yeah. Oh, right. Because I, when I was talking to him, Kevin Spacey style, into the darkness, I was drunk and I was like in my underwear and I was like, I was just like. I felt a little emasculated, which I can say here because they can't hear me. But like I, I feel like it was, it's all about like vibes and stuff, like communicate. Like like if right. I I, f- I believe 
not with all animals. Like, I don't think you can talk to a hamster just to do it. But I believe that it, when, it, when, it, when it comes to, when it's a real situation of, of animus, I guess you'd call it. Right. Like, when it's, when it's significant, when it's, when it's man versus beast on some level where it's like, okay, well, we're neighbors now, you know, like in the old days when it predates our mimetic evolution and cuts right to the heart. Like, we still have lizard brains. We still, we're still made of the same carbon from the same stars as these little pieces of shit. Like, like Why, why like, did you buy a ghillie suit? <sighs> Because I, I, mean, was, I, because I, I, I told I, them I would. Because I, and, and if I, and if I, do, if I say fucking, I'm going to do something, I said I'm coming up there. I, the, I said I'm ordering yeah, shit yeah, but, from Amazon and you've got two weeks. Why, why dress like a bush? I, I just sneak up on a, on a coyote who lives in bushes. To scare the shit out of no, them. No, they're to more scared of human them. beings and dressed like not, they're not bushes. They're, they're not scared of, uh, enough of human beings. They need to think that I'm psycho. So but any you, question you, you have they're gonna think is a that question you're a, that they'll have. A psycho bush, and they're going to go, oh, I'm going to pee on that bush. I'm going to fucking oh, be Oh, I friend. hope so, yeah. Wait, I hope what? they pee on me, Why and then I'm going to go, dumb? booyah! <laughs> and they're going to be like, what the fuck? They're gonna, but they're, they're, they're gonna, I'll bite you. And I go, bite me! I'm a bush man! <laughs> like, I just want them to be like, uh, was there a picture? Not worth it. Like, I, was, like, I was on the road. I was on the road telling a series of fantastic dick jokes uh, across the country, but I think I saw a picture of you dressed up in a ghillie suit. Yeah. And oh I, I, I couldn't, for the life of me, try to reconstruct what the fucking purpose of that was. I worked out in it, and it felt really great. So did you put it on? Did you, do you roll around? I swear around? I could bench 20 more pounds wearing it. I felt Because I felt like this like, do you, swamp thing. Do you cruise around in your backyard at night haunting coyotes no, in your ghillie suit? I haven't used it on them yet, because as I told them, I said... As you told them. I, I, said, I, said, I said to them... <laughs> I said, I said, you guys can stay as quiet or as loud as you want right now. You do whatever you want. Like, this isn't, I've told you before to be quiet. And you weren't. Right. So we're past that point. There's no credibility now. <laughs> yeah, politeness has gone out the window yeah. with you and these coyotes. There's a, I don't care if you, we're not playing games anymore. I'm not negotiating for fucking decibels. You don't I'm negotiate not be like, with oh, coyotes. Be quiet if I throw a rock. Oh, now you made more noise. Now you made less. I'm telling you right now, too late. You may as well scream and shout, or you may as well be quiet. Still won't save you, because here's what's going to happen. I'm ordering a ladder from Amazon. And when it comes, I'm climbing up over this wall, and I'm coming up there. What? Yeah. And to what end? What's the end game when you get up over well, the thing? Well, like, I, like, I feel like the effectiveness of that statement is in the negative space. <laughs> like, of, like, I want them to be going, why? <laughs> what are you going to do? And I, but I, was, I, do well, I, coyotes... I, I said, I said you, don't, you don't understand human society, and I don't understand coyote society. But I will tell you right now, you are dealing with a man with unexpressed rage <laughs> and on a, on a, on a well, deadline. And, and also, it seems like they keep pushing you. They, they condition me? No, it seems like they keep pushing you. Well, they keep pushing me, yeah. Right, yeah. No, yeah. I think, I think yeah. they It seems are. like they drew first blood. I think, <laughs> yeah. I, I They're think they are. They're messing with the wrong guy. Right. Dan, this is them conditioning you. They've taught you to be a bush. Nah, you just, you just got that idea from me mishearing Spencer. I got to say that uh, <laughs> I... I thought I knew how to fight coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, was, it, was it wolves or coyotes? Well, you, I you, never imagined putting on a bush suit. This is next level I, shit. I was thinking about getting coyote urine and put and putting coyote urine on the suit to like just 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 just, just then do, you hit just do them what, with you know, wolf urine. Like, like ca 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 contrary action. You know? Like, Wait, like, I, I, I missed I missed the wolf urine show. Tell me in a in a sentence or two what the point wolf of the wolf urine wolf, colon. Wolf, they wolves, hate that. Wolves are like wolf, coyotes are afraid of wolves unless right. they're having sex with them. Uh, but that's that's genus canis for you. Um, uh, uh, they're they're either they're either in breeding or eating each other. But uh, the the um, the okay. so so here's the thing that I need to explain. I just don't see the point you. of dressing up like a bush to fight a coyote because like you don't you want to be more conspicuous and more of a threat to them and look no, less like I a want, hedge. I know I want to traumatize them mentally. <laughs> Do you think coyotes have that sort of mental capacity to remember things? Because yes, I think if it's a shock to their system, and I'm not allowed to do that to them physically, I can't, and I wouldn't want to. But like, because I won't, they're, 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 like I said, they're struggling. Like, I, it's like, you know, but like, they, they, I, they come down my street 
like uh, like Waverly, they, they they come down and they come down Griffith Park and Waverly, and they silently like wraiths. They just come down and they walk down the street and they're looking around and they kind of hoot to each other. And they're all looking around, and they all go into somebody's backyard and eat somebody's little dog or cat. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, and it's he, fucking gnarly. And you see people, you wake up and you hear the screaming of the animal dying. And then you hear the screaming of the owner of the animal coming out in their underwear, throwing like hairbrushes and shoes at them and scaring them off as, they, as, as they're devouring their little... Precious animal. It's not happening. Not if you happening fucking talk to my... Paul Rust and Leslie Arfin about their dog dying, it's fucking really gruesome. Uh, so, so here's the thing, though. We're, we're living in an extraordinary times. You know, like I, this is no, this is not normal shit. Like I, the night that I did my monologue, like I, they, they, it was like uh, your monologue to the coyotes in your underwear. Yeah, it was like the purge anarchy. Like, like there was, like there was a coyote and like right up on my shit, going like, ay, 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 ay. And, and and but then like it was doing it because in the distance when you when it would shut up and you would hear in the far distance like miles away just this army it was just like <laughs> like like and I was like these fuckers think that they're gonna keep like pushing like they think that the, we're in the end days they could probably smell that we are they're like they they think they probably like they they hear us talking about trump in our bedrooms and they're like sounds like it's coyote time <laughs> sounds like we've entered the era of coyotes like i i, I might i might invent a lever next week <laughs> i might start i might be the archimedes of coyotes i won't know unless i get lots of protein in me Anyways, so 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 I so I I said to the coyotes that night because it was like hearing this shit in the distance, and I'm like, I was like, I just I knew I had to like put on a strong face and be like, I just I just I just you know just like kind of counterintuitive. I was just like, I'm glad you're quiet now. I hope you're quiet uh, forever because, but it doesn't matter because, like, I'm getting a ladder from Amazon and I'm coming up here. Is Armantown going to be about canine predators for the rest of time now? Because we got wolf urine and we, we got coyotes. Uh, well, I don't know. We could get through it if you. I mean, like, look, I, was, I had to. I had one thing to say about this, which was that during my workout, then <laughs> I, I said I was explaining all this to Dave Klein. Dave Klein says, "Have you tried praying?" I prayed. So look, what I said in my prayer also is like, look, God, uh, you know, obviously, if the coyotes. Don't come back. Not that the, not that there needs to be anything in this for you, but if the coyotes just disappear now, uh, you know I'm gonna tell the story. I'm not gonna leave you out. I'm not gonna like whitewash. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, you know, like I'm and I I know and I don't I don't mean that. You, I, mean, I know you like that PR. You like that. You like that acknowledgement. You know I don't know you don't thrive on it, but I will. I would. I I promise. I will tell people. I prayed. For the coyotes to go away, and then they went away. That'll be my story. And I sit here tonight to tell you, like I haven't heard the fucking coyotes since I prayed for them to go away. Oh shit! I uh, now 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 some some of you the, the atheist uh, fans, it's okay. That's all right. I love atheists. We need them. We need skeptics. We need we need them more than 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 ever. Uh, 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 you guys can uh, just assume that it was the Kevin Spacey monologue, because I told them I said thing. I said get your shit. I said I, I, I said look, it doesn't matter. Kevin what you Spacey do, I'm coming up. Kevin here. Spacey from what? From from House of Cards? From or? our commercials? From his uh, from his Christmas Christmas apron video on YouTube. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> was that branded? I was pretty fucked up. I got in the plane today uh, from Boston back to L.A., and uh, the first thing I saw was that Notre Dame was on fire in Paris, and that that, that really bummed me out. Oh, and no. Oh, yeah. What happened? It what? Burned. Nazis? No. Oh. I uh, think so, but no one's saying that yet. Yeah. Just, uh, just the, hunchbacks. I, I, don't, I don't think the... the, uh, the, the the verdict is in of what happened right. to it. They, might, they, they were doing reconstruction on it, and it might have been a, just like a, a construction accident. The yeah. actual church? Yeah, the, the, the whole the roof, roof fell in. The main oh, spire no. fell in that was built like in 1840 or something. That all fell in. Uh, most of the superstructure in stone and the bell towers stayed up, but there was a very big chance that all the bells were going to fucking fall down and kill everybody, the firefighters in there. But... Uh, friends of ours, uh, like church has friends, and I have friends that were like live right across the, the Seine from it. 
and watched the whole thing catch on fire. And there was people singing Ave Maria in French, and it was, or maybe Latin. I don't know. It, it, absolutely beautiful. And I don't think you have to be religious to be really struck by the fact that uh, a nearly what nine hundred year old building is just fucking in a towering inferno, and the whole roof fell in. It's really, it was really gruesome, man. It, it, it was, uh, it, it put me in a pretty bad mood. And I hope that uh, they can rebuild it and make it good. So, some very rich Frenchman uh, businessman said he's going to give like a like a hundred million euro to to start the uh, the rebuild on it, which is you better. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> And then, and then a friend of mine, uh, Brian, who's a very good friend, he, he made like the joke. I posted a, f- a picture of me that I took in front of the uh, Notre Dame, like maybe like three, four years ago. And he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, let's let's, let's make sure that uh, I, don't, I don't have a picture of myself in front of Notre Dame, so I guess I can't make it about me." And I was like, "I don't think it's making it about you. I, I don't think it's vanity. I think that's just grief." And we had a g- very very good conversation about that. I think social media does. Want you to make things about yourself, or like, or like we just are parakeets pecking at our own reflection and stuff. But I think to have visited Notre Dame and to be sad that the thing is fucking on fire um, isn't vanity. I think that's, uh, I think that's an expression of grief about watching one of uh, the world's great pieces of architecture die in front of us. And uh, I don't know. It may be very a depressed. Notre Dame in 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 in, in the in the states. In uh, like was that. it Indiana? Where is it? University or something? Where's, where's Notre Dame? And, and, and oh, it's just a college. I think is it, is it's not it, a city. Is it Indiana? Where is it? South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. But there's no city. It's just the name of the the. It, it's Notre Dame de Paris. It's uh, it's the it's the Our Lady of Paris, and that's the big church on the uh, uh was it the Ile de Cité or whatever? Like right, Ile right, de Cité on, on the island of uh, in the middle of the Seine River. And it's right in the heart of France, and it's probably the most iconic church uh, ever. I would have been less upset if the Sistine Chapel burned down than the fucking uh, Notre Dame. It's, it's Whoa. Shots fired. Hot takes. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, friends of mine like that live right by it, there's just pictures of just smoke. And then there's pe- people that were up in Montmartre, and uh, like the Sacre Coeur, like you're looking down on Paris, and you just see in the middle of Paris... The most famous thing in the world, just raging in fire. Um, it, uh, it it really really affected me. It made me really really sad. So supposedly the bells are still standing and they the, the, they've saved the towers and whatnot, but they're, they're going to have to rebuild it. They gotta. They've done it. They'll do it. <sighs> I haven't seen uh, Game of Thrones yet. Oh, boy. That's a good segue. <laughs> yeah. Also, didn't Jackie Robinson turn 100 today if he was still alive? <laughs> There's a whole lot of shit going on today, man. It's, it's, it's emotionally charged. I haven't seen it either. I, I, also, I got a new receiver from DirecTV, and I don't think I have my th- shit set to record Game of Thrones, so I might have to go back there and fucking... Have to sneak. Back. I wanted to watch that Scotty Bowers documentary, so I I went to Apple TV, and then the, and then I went to and then that took me to Amazon, and then Amazon told me I had to get stars through Amazon, and then stars said, uh, "Hey, do you want to uh, after your free trial? Do you want to get charged monthly or yearly? If you get charged yearly, you save fifty percent." For only seventy nine dollars a year for stars, and I was like, Bleh. so I paid like eighty bucks for a movie about a, a guy that was <laughs> gay with Spencer Tracy. Like, I'll never. What am I gonna bra- browse stars? What's wrong with me? I don't know. I guess I'd be like, what's wrong with me even more though if I did the monthly thing because I'm saving seventy bucks. Right. <laughs> I don't know. So Jackie Robinson was a. Uh, er- <laughs> African American ball player who was no, sorry. That's a real interesting documentary. I would I would I would I would recommend for people. Very 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 uh, ambient. I don't know. It's not like it's got. It's not like a big roller coaster ride. Like oh my god, I can't believe this happened. But it's just like an interesting portrait. What's the one uh, I was just hear, I heard about today? There's, there's a documentary about a dude that free climbed uh, El Capitan in Yosemite or something. 
What's it called? Free Solo. Free Solo? It, it, that's supposed to be fucking crazy, right? Mm. Is it good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got four yes. Hell yeah. And, and all of his friends are dead, right? Because everybody that tries to do that fucking dies. Don't fucking do that. I Don't. watch that. Uh, you guys watch I, that? I, I, I harness in when I go down staircases. <laughs> you know, I have serious uh, acrophobia. I think that's what, that's what it is. It's fear of heights, right? Yeah. That would be acrophobia. Like, Cody and I are looking at houses, and I there was a house I looked at. And we were never going to get it, but, like, it was, like, it just had this balcony that was, like, I couldn't go out on it. I mean, I could, but I was, like, I can't live. I couldn't live here. And it never occurred to me. Like, I've been in hotels, you know, all the time. You're in a hotel, and, like, I can't, like, I don't I, 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 I I wonder where I am on the, you know, ordinary the, meter of, like, people like that a, can't, like... Last uh, New Year's Eve or the one before, we sang the Mike Ravellos thing. We were, we were on a very precipitous balcony the yeah. whole time on that one. You were yeah, when I go up to a balcony, balcony like that, like, my legs get numb. I, I'm seized with what I've read is described. I, did, I couldn't put it, words onto it before I read it in this, like, coffee table book about phobias. But it, it talked about how... People are people with this phobia are particularly disturbed by what they describe as a as a as a as a as a uncontrollable thought about jumping. Yeah, the, the, because the, the, I think the, your brain is just running through the, the, the fear of heights. They say is not so much a fear of falling as a fear of jumping. Yeah, I know, but it, and it's also like like I notice like if I'm holding an object or if yeah. anyone around me is holding an object, like I can't stand watching Cody with the fuck like that New Year's where Cody's just like. You know, hi, and she's got like the, the like whether it's a f- whether it's a phone or a glass. I'm just like the thought of this thing like like dropping. Yeah, like I just get freaks that. me out. Yeah, are you I acrophobic? think it's like I think I think the I, I don't know. I've read or something that the idea is it's like your brain is kind of doing flashcards, or it's like, what if I jumped? No, bad. That would be bad. What yeah. if I uh, grabbed this cop's gun? No, that would be <laughs> bad. What if I like did a sandwich or something? That'd be fine. You know, but it's just like, it's just the brain is kind of reinforcing the negative mental and emotional uh, what, what if association you're on a, on a to make sure you with won't a cop, do it. What if you're on a, on, a, on a balcony with a cop, grabbed their gun and just jumped off? That'd be great. And then they're like, he didn't, why did You'd he be an my absolute he... legend, my man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'd call you Hans Gruber. But yeah, I get it the most with phones. I'm just Shoot. always imagining like dropping like phones off bridges or opening up the hotel of a, a window yeah. of a hotel just to drop my phone out. And I'm like, this is bad. I got to get out of here. Like, you guys, you guys... We, we, I do a lot of shows uh, in the Bay Area, and so we're constantly going uh, back and forth across the uh, Golden Gate where people kill themselves all the time. And I'm fascinated by... I had a cousin who the, did that. Huh? I had a cousin who did that. Who did what? He killed himself on the bridge. He jumped off the bridge? Yeah. Your cousin? It's sad. Which, Which side? Bri- city what? side or the other side? Uh, my mom's uh, sister's No, I mean, which side, side of the bridge, you, you <laughs> fucking <laughs> suicide nephew? Up river. St- stop making this about you, Spencer. <laughs> which side of the... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because some people That's awesome That's most, amazing Most people jump off <laughs> My mom's Most side. people jump off uh, so Facing the city Because they want to see San Francisco As they kill themselves But once in a while Some punk rockers Fucking go off the other side yeah, Which is I fucking rad I don't know That that was written down I mean I'm sure it was Right I don't know if it was brought up But yeah, I, I have nothing in common they, if, With if those If they folks. didn't want people To jump off the Golden Gate Bridge Bigger fences yeah. Big, they stop putting a little sign that says, hey, call this number if you're feeling about, you're thinking about killing yourself. Yeah, there is stuff they can do, and I can't remember why they don't do what they can do. I think it, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. It might, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's constitutional fucking liberty. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe, you know maybe the, it's San Francisco, right? So they're, 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 maybe the there's man, like man. a hippie in charge of the city, and 6, they're like, 000, hey, man. 6,000 people, 6, people kill themselves off the bridge every year, and I still can't get a parking spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, thank, thank you. It used to be an AIDS joke. Now I made it about the bridge. Uh, so you guys caught up on <laughs> that uh, <laughs> on that glass trilogy? What? The you got you got you watch the Unbreakable and then you watch the oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Split, and uh, you got you got all caught up. You see that glass movie? 
Dan, is it me? is it me or do you sound better? Your, your congestion seems to have gone away. Yeah, I was that was that a full put on at the start of the no, show? No, I can't. I mean, I don't want to be gross, but I swallowed kind of a queen bee loogie. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. And the queen, the queen, the queen went down the down down the hatch, stopped laying the drones. You know. What yeah, I'm but saying? You, you you sound like you're back to full fighting shape right now. It could be you know, a little medicine. <laughs> it's like Popeye's <laughs> oldest medicine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I watched that Glass movie by myself, uh, and I and I I'm 46 years old, and I knew what I was doing, <laughs> and I watched the whole thing, and at the end of it, I was like, so what are you gonna tell people you watch this, and you're gonna be like, what a piece of shit, and I was like, well, you knew it was gonna be a, what did you think, like what what did you think, and then and I was like, you know what. I liked it. I may as well say that. Why, why would you? Why would you watch something and then like? What am I watching it for? Mm-hmm. There was a million. I still haven't watched the Notebook. I, I, I was like, <laughs> I, there's stuff I could watch if I wanted to enlighten myself. I was like, well, I'm gonna watch Glass so I can round out the Unbreakable trilogy and watch Bruce Willis, uh, Sam Jackson, and. Th- that guy, <laughs> the the star of Split, uh, just uh, they spend the whole movie in a hospital run by the woman that you get if Joan Cusack isn't available. And uh, <laughs> and I'm like I'm like if this movie if this if they just have a fight in this movie's parking lot I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> And that, sure enough, they fucking, the whole movie, it's like The Breakfast Club, that movie. Like, they're just, like, in a hospital for an hour and a half, and then they fight in the parking lot. It is so goofy. It is the goofiest movie I've ever seen. Nah, not really. I've seen goofier movies. Surely. I don't know. I can't name any offhand. My brain is Swiss cheese, but it was just such a goofy movie. There are these, there's like, there's like a... Is it a comedy? Uh, no, I mean not, 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 not. Not on purpose. Yeah, it, it wasn't trying to be funny. I mean, there was probably a moment or two when I was like, "Oh, and then this will be funny." I didn't notice that, but but it was just like uh, it's just such. Are a, these in theaters or wh- wh- where are these from? No, this is uh, you can you can watch this now on their streaming I don't, services. I don't, I, I, based on your description, I have no desire to watch these at all. No, you wouldn't want to watch this movie. Right. I was just checking with the kids. I mean, I know they're. <laughs> They love the Shamalion. The Shmali? Oh, oh it's, a, it's a Shmalion? Shmalion. It's a Shmalion. Yeah. <sighs> Did you know that uh, M. Night Shmalion is uh, actually, um, he's uh, <laughs> the brother of a more beloved uh, director named M. Night uh, Gamalion. And <laughs> like... His his mom. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because you don't have different last names. If you, know. <laughs> you might. <laughs> what if he had a different dad? That's dumb. But, 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 I don't know. You know, what, it's just what, like what, what just like the... oh, Gamaleon, and then Gamaleon d- d- died in a a, right. a boat. Oh wait, no, wait. What am I? See, that wouldn't make sense. Well, then and then she just calls him Shamaleon because it's like it's like calling the uh, creative arts Emmys the Shmemmys. You know, <laughs> it's like ah, Shamaleon. You know, like you're, you're no you're no you're no Gamaleon. <laughs> Kamalian, Shamalian. You know, he's got to live with that. Is, that, is, is <laughs> that how you say his name, Shamalian? No, it's not how I say it. I'm sure it's not how, like. Yeah, well, you say bagel, so we know, nobody knows. <laughs> I don't have the energy for you. <laughs> your, your hair's looking very good right now. You got this kind of, kind of, uh, deadliest catch kind of, uh, <laughs> c- captain <laughs> of a vessel. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> The, the Bering Sea gives up its great haircuts. Uh, What's your secret, Dan? What's your secret? Uh, how, how do you keep your hair so soft and manageable? I mean, so I don't. So Cody kind of curates the Asperger Detective episodes, but okay, this motherfucker has been killing it. This motherfucker. I don't I don't know if I'm hearing him out of order or what. Are you listening like, to the Patreon episodes? It could be. Maybe she subscribed to the Patreon, but dude, he went off on this thing. Whoa. What's it actually called? It's not called Asperger's. It's called no, Cold it's not. Case Murder Mysteries. Cold Case Murder Mysteries. Uh, 
I want to say his name is Ryan Kraus. It is. Okay. I mean, he's like, first of all, he did, I, I don't know if he did it recently or if it was just there and I didn't know it, but he did, he did my, the, the, uh, Kanika Powell, uh, oh, uh, uh, mystery, like, which is that, that young lady that I talked about who, uh, you know, when we had the red handed girls on and I was saying like, I don't understand why, uh why this thing, you know, it's just like so crazy that she was, you know, these more than one right. guy was like trying to kill her. And what did just he kill her. But he, he really like laid it to rest for me. What did he say? He, he, he pinned it on this like guy that was active at that time before going right. to jail. And he was like a sloppy pseudo serial killer who did run with a gang who kind of like had people doing his bidding. And he was a UPS guy that was like, he was he frequently used friends to do like these hold up jobs where they'd pretend to deliver a package and then go in the thing and like all this stuff and he was doing like rapes and murders weren't beyond, weren't weren't beyond him and um he 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 ended up in prison sometime after this happened but he was just like it's that guy and he didn't get caught for that and then he went to prison for other shit and he's in prison now and i was like oh that makes me feel better yeah because That's good. because it just seemed like and it, and also it was like the thing the key thing about it was that the thing that was scary to me was that the end of the story is that she comes home from doing her errands and whoever was trying to get into her apartment all of a sudden shoots her in her apartment building's vestibule and just runs away but it's like oh no, but he, this is a person that's really stupid and that spent weeks trying to get into her apartment. And it was, it was like very clear from the behaviors. He kind of laid it out. He's like, no, this person wanted in her apartment and used all the dumbest ways to try to get into her apartment. And then out of absolute frustration, just like waited there and probably pulled a gun on her as she came home. And she was military and savvy and was no way she was going to comply. And, and, and then there was a struggle or something and just in, she started screaming and he couldn't control the situation. So he shot her so she couldn't be a witness and ran off. And that's why it was like, but that, that's the thing that was really freaking me out because it made, it's like, well, if it wasn't about uh, uh, assaulting her and it wasn't about robbing her, it was like, like this, this whole thing was a coordinated attempt to kill one woman and no one's investigating it. And, but it was like, nah, it was a sloppy, it was just, it was, a, it was the same kind of criminal that we're all in danger of all the time. Like it just, I was able to file it now. Thank you. Asperger detective. He's great. He, I, I, is it normal for, for the, this true crime stuff for a guy to have just like a really concrete laid out theory that he supports with several, you know, no, no. I mean, he's like Columbo. That's what's way. cool about it is cause like, I don't really like true crime necessarily. I mean, I don't hate it or whatever. I just don't engage in a lot, but like, he's just like, you know, he's like, here's the crime. And here's why this person did it. Who's, who's, not proven guilty, but I'm just going out on a limb and saying I believe in it. And it's just crazy because it's like, I don't know if he's right or whatever. And sometimes you don't know if he's right, but other times it's just like, oh man, this guy's just like, they should give him a medal or something. Definitely look these people up, but you know, I don't think a lot of them, you know, anyway, it's just he, very interesting. Then he also does these like little, little things once in a while. And like you said, sometimes he does it badly, aggravatingly or mysteriously, but then, then boy, I heard a couple where he was like, nailing it and one of them was like the Kessie Kessie I don't know, last name Kessie I think that was like this this woman who stabbed her kids and then tried to pretend like someone came in her house and did it and um and he, just at the end of his uh at the end of of some of his episodes he he just goes and that's about it and that's why she stabbed her two children but the reason why she did that is because of the same reason we do anything right. because she's afraid, afraid of dying, afraid of being alone. She can't stand the idea that her few stolen moments on this planet are precursors to an infinity of darkness after gaining only a brief glimpse of temporary fleeting light. She's worried. She's a sentient mammal like the rest of us. She doesn't know. Should she lose weight? Should she gain weight? Is she doing it wrong? Did she get the right car? He'll do like these crazy like George Carlin meets yeah. Bukowski like fucking Henry Miller like uh, monologues that aren't really that forced. He's like really like I'm like go Aspie beat poet like he 
he he he he really he really he's really does it right. I mean, Asperger it's, detective. Um, I, I I almost woke Cody up. I'm like, you gotta you gotta rewind and listen to this guy. He's like laying it down, really laid it down. So you have a Dan, you have a ghillie suit at your house currently right now. <laughs> Is it like in the closet? Is it on the floor? Is it in a, is it in a case? Like where, where, where is it currently existing right now? Well, well, it's probably just strewn about the bedroom because when Cody saw me in it, you know. <laughs> no, it's like laying. Did you have a, sniper sex? Did you did you do a sniper, sniper thing sex? Or? No, no. <laughs> I uh, it's probably laying on the uh, living room coffee table. Right, and you you've worn it. You've you've, you've strode about in it. You've been outside in it and you've, you've communed with the coyotes. No, I haven't. I haven't Not used yet. it. He doesn't have yet. the ladder yet. No. You've got to get that ladder. Yeah. You, you went for the ghillie suit before you got ladder. Ghillie suit came first. <laughs> I don't know why. I got a ladder if you want to borrow it. Mm. I actually didn't order mine yet. Oh, shit. It's kind of bluffing them coyotes. <laughs> That's probably good. Can we do a show where you come out in the ghillie suit? Yeah, I mean... Maybe. Mm. But I guess a proper ghillie suit, you'd have to dress up like the Dynasty typewriter. You'd have to wear like mahogany and have a candle on your head and stuff like that. Like you'd want to camouflage yourself based on your surroundings. Yeah, I mean, right, like a big armoire. <laughs> <laughs> but who cares, you know? Oh, Dan wore something. <laughs> Stupid. I've been this this uh, Asperger detector's been blowing my mind because the, like you said he does these rappy up things that are like about themes and stuff and it's like it's been like church or something it's made me realize I was like oh man I'm afraid to ask for things <laughs> and I'm like I got to ask for stuff more and I've been analyzing my life Oh yeah, man, it feels some, good. There was something that he did a little bit where I was I got a little inspiration from it too. I was yeah. I wonder if it was the same thing. Right. Ask for what, Spencer? Ask for stuff. Like, for instance. Like, stuff you need. You know how people are like, oh, let me ask for help or ask for stuff? I don't do that. I was thinking about it. <coughs> it was, it's one of the things that drives my self-hatred. You know, um, there's, a, there's a podcast called, I think, Small Town Dicks. Um, <laughs> and it's, I'm uh, interested. My favorite Billy Joel song. <laughs> It's a it's a real pro one. It's uh, Yardley Smith. Is that the uh, Yardley Lisa Smith? Simpson? Yeah. Uh, I think it's pronounced Yardley. No, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, uh, her friend, and then they have these two detectives, and uh, it's really well done. It's like a higher end true crime podcast, well produced. And um, but uh, they had an episode where Yardley uh, told these. The stories about her as a victim uh um and uh, there were a couple of them and then there was one for dessert that was like just insane it was like the the the, the behavior of the person trying to victimize her was insane but then it was almost it was almost the profound thing about it was how how insane she felt as a victim, like how she, she just, she's describing this crazy behavior on the part of this guy that was doing work on her house and he started running all this like crazy shit on her. And, um, and I, you know, it's funny. It's like, like I, I have, I feel like I've noticed this. Like if you could picture, uh, Yard, Yard, Yardley, uh, uh, Smith as a, as an actor, she, she, um, she was, she was, she wasn't always just the voice of, of Lisa Simpson, like she's 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 she appears in TV shows and stuff, and she was uh, having kind of a heyday in the '90s, and she's she's a very small, like kind of adorable, sort of like like unassuming, like everything about her face kind of kind of transmits this sort of like uh, uh, like I don't know unassuming or something energy something like it, it, it and it's interesting because I've heard from from women before like like w women there's certain kinds of like women who are like 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 I I have this like kind of thing about me where guys like they smell something on me and they're like coming after me because they're like it, it, it's like like I have this like victim target on my head or something she didn't say anything like that but I was like it occurred to me while listening to these stories, I was like, I like, I bet it's not just because she's famous, but like, like it, it is because it's because like there's certain people that like 
they just um i i, I think like like predators are just like oh it, yeah i don't i don't know if it's like they they if they know it's easy prey cuz it's like it's also it's guys like stalking like falling yeah. in love not just like oh she's an easy target it's more like oh i'm in love i'm in love yeah i'm i'm just walking with certain people and then like people just yell at them like and it's like i've never experienced this in my life but it's just like people seek them out and like are comfortable throwing shit at them for whatever reason i i don't know if it's a like yeah like a predator sense or something um yeah and i it's like it was cra- it's like like the, this uh, actor is telling this story about this just absolute batshit psycho guy that's like doing work on her house and he's like ramping up the uh the stuff and she keeps she keeps talking about these 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 crazy points where you're listening to the story and and her friend is listening to the story and saying like okay so that at this point like you did you think about telling anybody about this like crazy thing that was happening to you and uh and and she always had this reason why no no not at that time or thing she wasn't being dodgy about it but it kind of built to this moment where she she I mean she's been through this and figured this all out by now this is decades ago but it was like she the reason she came to LA to be an actor as this tiny person that 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 you know isn't necessarily she, she didn't look like Farrah Fawcett she was like I'm gonna go eat the world because I'm entitled to it because of my stature or my whatever it's like there's this like the, the culture of her family and her psychology in her head was like I gotta own my ambition and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do this thing and that it's like a very healthy thing like oh own your dreams and visualize your success and all that stuff and that uh but it comes with this other thing that she's she's getting victimized by these like crazy stalker guys and she's not telling anybody like and it's it's like so far beyond points where, like red flags where where you know she like anyone else might have gotten killed you just don't know and then and then but and then, and then she kind of got she got choked up toward the end because she finally got to a point with this guy where she simply this guy came over to her house that was doing work on her. He, had, he, he, he explained to her that he had just killed two people for her uh, because they had been following her. And he was like laying this whole thing on her and I need $25,000. It's just this crazy, like weird psycho shakedown. And, uh, and then she just kept letting it go. She still didn't go to anybody. And then she describes the moment where she finally, she just runs out of her house and she goes and calls this guy that worked at the studio uh, the fox lot probably for um for help and she starts like breaking while she's telling the story because that's that's the thing that got to her was that she finally had to explain to this guy like this is what's been going on and i I, like like and you could see her in her voice it's like 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 oh this is the moment of my weakness where I have to tell somebody that I let this get this far and that I finally need help with it or something. And it was just such an interesting, that, 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 that other side of, uh, of confidence and ambition and autonomy. Like you could be, you, you might be without knowing it, like um, pathologically incapable of, of, of telling somebody you need help. Um, and I thought I, w- I wondered. If That's I, what I if meant. I, I was like, I was like, geez, I wonder if I'm that way. No, if, I, if something goes wrong in my life, if, if I fucking smear it all over everyone. I find that I, I can ask people for things that, in a workplace context, but outside of that, I have a very rough time like burdening my friends with a request, or like I always feel like it's burning. But it's just like, hey, you want to get a sandwich? It's like not, you know, it's not trying to take anything, but it feels weird to me. But it might be a similar thing. Who knows? Yeah. Sorry. No, I, there was nothing. I, thought, thought, I was just, I, I just, I couldn't believe that story. I was, I was really taken by it. She was like, like this. Uh, she, she, she seems like such a, um, such a remarkable character. Like, like cause she, she's, she's like, like, I really like that podcast because they're very, they're very like, um, kind of dug, dug down into the, into their little true crime stories, and it's, it feels, it feels less uh, ghoulish because they're talking to detectives. So they're, the, it's the detectives walking them through little cases that they have. Uh, a lot of victim blaming, a lot of parent blaming. Like that, that there, there, there was like, uh, like uh, there was, a, there, there was this like uh, sex crime thing. What the fuck was it? It was like I just remember one of the detectives explaining. This is maybe this put me off having kids forever. I'm not doing it anymore. I, like I haven't told Cody I made the permanent decision. But he was he, he was like he was like look 
your kid's got an iPhone, you need to go through that thing or whatever they're up to, it's on you. I was like, I'm not going through my kid's phone if they're like, and you can't keep your kid from having a phone. They're like, like, like you, like until the kid's 18 and they're living with you, it's your responsibility as a parent. Modern parenting, you you got to go through their phone and make sure that they're, you know, you got to check up on them. That's the, there's a whole thing happening. Like they go all these stories about kids that end up doing all this fucked up shit or falling into these fucked up worlds. Like it's all on their phone, and uh, and that that's the that's the same thing as their bedroom. Um, uh, when, if you know in the in the 60s, and like you gotta. You got it's not their diary. It's like you got to go through. I'm like I'm like I'm listening to this advice. I'm like if that's true and I guess maybe it technically is. Like like because God knows no one else is going to raise your kid for you. But and then I'm like okay, so I'm not having a kid for sure. I'm going to go through a 12-year-old's shit or be the only dad that doesn't let a 12-year-old have whatever the fuck everyone else has, you know. Do you, do you think the ship has sailed for you in terms of children like for good? <sighs> I don't know. You know these. You know these tadpoles are still dancing. As in oh, Ted, dude. I, I learned that the hard way. I mean, Cody. It's all. It's all, it's all up to Cody. Like, I mean, it's not up. I mean, it's, it's like it's 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 driven by her. She's 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 in her prime. She's she's in her creative prime. She's in her biological prime. I she, she, I'll I'll do I'll 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 probably do whatever she wants. That's not true. I, I mean, if like if I if I was seized with like no, I definitely don't want kids. And then she was like, it's time. I might be like, uh, I don't know. I have to gaslight her somehow. <laughs> Is there a book on how to gaslight? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. We're so, we're we're really up in the air. We've been we've just been having. Is is, is that a uh, an imperative for her or no? She's not. We're not. Yeah, she's not. She. We don't. We're undecided. And like she had, she had a little period where she was like, "Should I freeze my eggs?" She talked to the therapist about it, and the therapist was like, "Look, if freezing your eggs." Is like a ritual you need to engage in that lets you own your life. Uh, then, by all means, freeze your eggs. But if you can skip the egg freezing and just and just do the like, just stop identifying yourself by you know, it's like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 don't you shouldn't be this shouldn't be running your life. That's crazy. This therapist probably didn't say that's crazy, <laughs> um, but but and then Cody was like, okay, I'm gonna freeze my eggs. I told this story, and then she like looked at the information. She's like, step one, don't get high for six months, and she's like, nope. <laughs> okay. Well, you were good. Okay. Well, eventually you're gonna okay. <laughs> deal breaker. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I ran, we ran into a friend, and she uh, she's in her forties, and she uh, she has a podcast about trying to do. Uh, inseminate herself there's a couple of those podcasts out there now um people that are going through the process of trying to conceive and sharing the the details of it and stuff is, is that molly hockey's podcast yeah how do you know do you, she, well she does a podcast oh okay right that's so weird that i mean it's like she's she's advertised it on other podcasts that i've listened oh to. okay it must be is it popular well how, how I, do i know i don't think it's super i mean i don't know spencer yeah, she's do, a, uh, do, do you have desire spencer to be a father or no oh i got all sorts of desires <laughs> to, to be a father i don't know i could i could i could see that i don't know i don't want to uh force it I don't think that I want one like a lot, but I feel like I could do that, you know? The ultimate reason to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> to prove something to the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, th I think the ship has sailed for me. I, I mean, I, I could still do it, obviously, but I like, like my father had me when I was 41. I'm 45. And he, like, I, I, I never had any memories of my dad who didn't have gray hair. Like, he was always a salt and pepper, gray haired guy, and he taught soccer and baseball and how to ride a horse and how to dig a hole and do a thing. And, like, like he was like, like, there's like a super dad. And it's like, I, I just don't know if I've got the fucking. I do improv. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm getting such joy out of withdrawing from the world. And I, and like, like, like my, in, in 13 years, if I had a kid tomorrow, that's only 13 years I have before I have another, like, fucking goober. Like that, I just that I'm trying to cut loose, you know. It's, it's like, like, oh, great, another fucking like kid that, that I have to raise. I just feel like I feel like I have to raise three hundred thousand of them every time I post an Instagram. 
I was like, I just want to like, I just want to experience for one moment before I get diagnosed with something like peace. Like I did it. I beat you. Guess what? I didn't like any of you either. Ha ah, fooled ya. You know, I thought like just what, just one, one hour of that before, before I'm like in charge of whether or not people feel good or bad about themselves. I like, I hate people. I've lost a lot of faith in, in, in the species, but I don't feel like it's a bad thing. I feel like my faith was uh, unhealthy. It was like uh, codependence or something. It was like, you know, approval addiction or something. It's like, yeah, people are, people suck. Like they're, they're shitty. They're not all shitty, and they're, they're not, none of them are all shitty as individuals, and, and certainly not all people are shitty. There's, a, there's lots and lots of better ones and all this stuff, but it's just in general, it's all like, you know, bacteria, you know? Just, they're just garbage. The internet is just, it's just, it's just I, I still struggle now with like, oh, is it, is it like, like, I, like, like, I feel like my latest insight is like, cause I, I posted this Instagram, like where it was like the, you know, the photo of the black hole. And, uh, you know, I thought was a reasonably, I thought it was a funny joke. Like, like, like a uh, take on the thing. It was like the photo of the black hole. And I did this like caption where I was like, uh, oh, it was, it was a headline that said like, meet the woman that, uh, took the photo of the black hole. And I, and I, and I so I did this caption that was like, okay, well, uh, I saw this headline uh, after I wrote my Rotten Tomatoes review of, of the black hole and then did this kind of like review of the black hole where it was very clear that like I was uh, trying to take something away from, from the, <laughs> the black hole as if it was created by a woman. Um, and, uh, it was just, it was just like a, like, a, like, you know, it was like, like, I, th I thought it was a well-crafted, like, but not like beyond anyone's like reckoning kind of thing. And I remember like at the end of it, I was like, the, I, I was like, I always, I always like hover over the click button. I'm like, okay, what is anybody going to misunderstand? And I remember going like, well, you say the word wheelchair at the end, that'll probably trigger a couple people and that's okay. Cause I, I, I said like, by, by the way, but bottom line is this black hole is basically just a, a collapsed star. Uh, that uh, could have been predicted by uh, almost any guy in a wheelchair or something like that. And I was like, uh, like uh, you said wheelchair, and like, you, you might get a couple of, like ableist uh, uh, comments, and that's fine. It, 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 and then it clicked send, and it was like I looked back at it, and I'm like, holy shit! It was like it was like like a petri dish, and it was crazy. It was like 10 percent of 300,000 people just 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 in all sincerity, just going like. Yeah, but just because she's a woman doesn't make the black hole any less valuable. Like, like in true sincerity, well, I, I read that one and I, and I predicted before I looked at any comments that you're going to get rumbled on that. Like, and then, they, they, and they, then they, the other ten percent are arguing with them and going like, "No, he's right. This is fucking bullshit." Like identity politics. I'm like, How? like, like, so just like dumb people. It was, it was actually like a out of all the things I've ever done that have been that misunderstood by that many people, like I was, I'm kind of like, I regret that one the least. Cause it really is this like moment of clarity where I'm like, you can kind of like see, like it felt like equal, equal, a num equal people on two lobes. There were just like people that saw concepts that made them want to leap to the defense of something for with good intentions and people that hated those people. Is it like, but, all just like people not exercising any amount of critical thinking, really, right? Because there's absolutely no way. I mean, what at, at what point did you? That's why I started thinking about it. I was like, okay, so are people getting dumber, or like? And then I pictured like, okay, let's go to the Roman Colosseum, and like, I think that what's ha I think that part of what the internet is doing is is this. So imagine being at the Roman Colosseum, and you, you, there's no there's no technology beyond like you're just you're just in a crowd of people. That's the that's the biggest internetiest crowd you could be in is just a bunch of people at the Colosseum, and then someone comes out and they think they're they're gonna try to do a little bit, you know, like they and they they like maybe something about their bit. It's not they didn't think it through. I had a I I, I wrote on a the VMAs in 2006 and this writer, Matt Murray was like, uh, he, he's like, you know, you're being too nuanced with some of this stuff. Like I wrote, I wrote on the Jimmy Fallon VMAs and like, what I learned is that th these kinds of audiences can express themselves in one of two ways. They can, they can scream or they can be quiet. Um, and, and, and so like, like, so you're imagining like, 
like the bandwidth being lowered. So you don't have a comment. You don't have, you don't, everyone doesn't have like this QWERTY keyboard in front of them. And, and also, but they're connected to each other. So think about all the times you've ever been in public and you've been watching something like at a carnival or something and like it probably it's probably a hard thing to remember because it probably doesn't stick out that much in your memory because it's but but you can, what you can probably remember is that this happens now and then you just probably can't like conjure up a list of the times you've seen it but you're at a live performance and something something goes wrong something something goes wrong between the performer and the audience the, uh, the the either it's either it's the performer's fault that they, they, they didn't they didn't realize like how the venue how the timing of it was going to work or it's just simply like it's a matter of opinion on your part of whether or not the who there's anyone's fault but like you have memories in your head of like a disconnect happening where somebody in the audience might might go like like oh boo like 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 because they're responding at the wrong time to the wrong concept and it, but then like that person traditionally um they get they they get they get swallowed up either by silence or there's like there's a group of people around them that are like off with his head no no and that but then they'll overhear people going like it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit like like in real time and it'll just kind of like wash out that that's like usually we're biologically designed for that to be a much more organic process. And yeah, people pop off, and they want to be special and they want to they want to contribute to things, but we're designed biologically to do that in an environment where it just like stabilizes itself so quickly, and which allows you to not have put your ass out there. That's the problem I think is that by the time people are telling you these days that you're a fucking idiot, that which happens to the best of us, some shit goes over your head sometimes, you're just looking at stuff the wrong way, the wrong angle, coffee cup, the wrong nutrients in your breakfast, like wrong wrong timing, some uh, performers fault sometimes too. Like uh like 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 but by the time someone is telling you uh, you didn't get it. It's over your head. You don't have a sense of humor. You didn't. You didn't get it. You have written a fucking essay <laughs> about about how no Captain Crunch should never be cloned. Uh, cloning is un unethical. Like there is no Captain Crunch. That's a serial character. And you're like, your tendency is therefore going to be to be like, well, yeah. I, I, still, though, there are considerations. Like, like where, whereas normally, the, what you're designed to be able to do is just go like, like you, you're only you only have just a little bit of a yay or a boo coming out of your mouth before you feel that humiliation kick in. You don't have this kite that you've flown that's been designed and 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 had all this energy put into it. And I think that's and on one hand, I think that that's like a way of of looking at it positively and saying like, look, we're no different. We're not changing that much. We're just, the, just the medium. It just, it just, it just, it just shines different lights in different parts of our general, the same amount of stupidity that we've always had. But a really scary way of looking at it is that, yeah, but that's, that's a feedback loop. That is, that's a memory you store now. It's different than going to a magic show and go, the ladies saw a little bit in half and you're like, call 911. And, and like someone goes like, it's, it's magic. And, and you're like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> that's a different story you have in your head and you file that differently and it affects your complete, your, your ne neurological map completely differently then I think then if you write a, a, a paragraph, uh, you know, advocating and, and defending and, and like accusing and, and, and hashtagging and, and then someone is like, wow, you read that wrong. Um, and and I, don't, I don't know if that, it's like, it worries me that, 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 that that's gonna make the, that, that sock off balance makes the dryer scoot all the way across the basement floor. <laughs> Do you, do millennials still have socks, basements, and dryers? <laughs> <laughs> probably, they, probably they figured yeah, out how to make are, dryers are, not scoot across the floor. Are we floor. living in a post-sock millennial world right now? They probably have like, oh, like, like contextually aware like dryers now that are like, there's only one sock in here. I will, I will group swarm. Uh, I will tag uh, three other dryers on the block and receive dry sock information from them. I want to I, 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 I hear more from Millennial Dryer. 
Isn't it interesting? Uh, I think it was a TED Talk I heard where somebody was like, <laughs> this is interesting. This guy, like, like, oh, this is a TED Talk I want to give. It's, it's sort of like just doomsaying. Uh, somebody explaining that um, we can't, uh, we're not going to stop technology. Like, uh, we, we keep, we, I know we know that in general, but we keep, the fact that we keep thinking of it like, Oh, if something goes too far, we'll stop it. Or if something goes into a dangerous area, they were talking. They were talking about like the smart devices. The fact that if you get a new refrigerator now, it's it, there's a good chance it'll be like Wi-Fi capable for no reason. That some Yahoo just, of course, they put they made your refrigerator like able to log onto the internet and like check on your j- juice or so, like like it's a, it's it always <laughs> starts as some gimmick, you know? Because oh, what if that sells an extra refrigerator? But it's like. It, it it's never gonna stop. There is no way you can't opt out of this stuff. Is, I don't know why I find that interesting. I guess I just find it like uh, uh, awful. I guess we're we're in the end of the show because I'm just drunk and babbling nonsense. I I I travel so much, and then I I have this thing where like I'll buy some food, and then I have to go on the road, and I'll put everything in the freezer, and now I just got. Nothing but shit in the freezer. <laughs> I just have a million loaves of bread in the freezer that I just. I, that, that's. I, 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 what kind of we're, bread? We're just gonna. We're just gonna. We're just gonna. Tur- we're just two old men on a bus stop bench. <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're like. We're like. a mammoth duck variation. So we're just gonna be like. I want the bike. The bike is nice. I want to. You never were on a red rider wagon. I don't know. Uh, Refrigerators are a bummer. And then you go, you buy some bananas, and then you're like, I, I gotta leave town, and and you put the bananas in the freezer because you don't want them to be rotting, and then you just got some frozen ass bananas in there, and they're black, and then you, it's just, yeah, this is yeah. I mean, I don't, I haven't bought, I haven't, I haven't stepped foot in a grocery store since since uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, <laughs> and whenever the- it was, it was just like for a party or something weird like it was some scavenger hunt or something it wasn't like when was the last time you went to a movie theater hmm i think i fell asleep <laughs> during that piece of shit uh george clooney uh hitler stealing art movie uh the the, the monument the man? monument man monuments man monuments yeah i went to that uh it was it was me and aaron mcgathy uh, wow, so that was a while ago. That couldn't have been no, because I felt like Cody and I saw Deadpool together. Um, I went to uh, the, the the Vista Theater, which I love, and I went there to go see uh, Dunkirk, and I'd had a couple drinks, and I fell asleep like immediately, and then woke up like about twenty minutes in, going like, "I'm just a drunk guy asleep in a movie theater <laughs> at a matinee." And I got up and I left, and then yeah. I came back the next day sober, and then I liked the movie. It was a good movie. <laughs> Yeah, you ever go to the theater in like Old Town Pasadena where you 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 get the armchair? Oh yeah, with the sleep. You yeah, get the they bring the yeah. pretzels no, no, to you. And don't 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 feed me and get me drunk during yeah. the movie. I'm gonna fucking fall asleep. Yeah, no, that's what I did. Monuments Men, baby. I was probably <laughs> I was probably snoring. I mean, I can't imagine. They give you a blanket. Don't yeah. give me a blanket. When, when Gene Wilder died, maybe maybe I've spoken about this before. When Gene Wilder passed away, uh, the ArcLight in Hollywood showed a bunch of Gene Wilder films. And Church and I went and saw Blazing Saddles, and it was awesomely people that were over 40 and people that were, uh, like, under 30. <laughs> I can't imagine and, and, and people the, under 30. Uh, the, pe- the, the people over 40 were dying laughing because we've all seen the movie a million times, and we can karaoke the whole thing. And the, the youngsters were well, a little uncomfortable yeah. with, because there's 11 N-bombs in the first reel, yeah. and nobody knew where to fucking put it. And I, I, I thought it was... The, Made it, the movie even funnier that people were being bummed out at Blazing Saddles. Well, I mean, if you repeated that process today, I think you'd find the people over forty would would already. The times have changed so fast that yeah. nobody would be laughing in there, right? I guess I don't know. It, it, it's uh, it's good that things are changing. By the way, what sometimes I search my head for that stuff. I'm like, 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 what is that like? That reaction you have when you hear another thing about like, well, so and so's uh, wants uh, from now on, you they should call this thing that thing, and then you like you always have that. I always have that thing. These my I statements. I I I I always have that like thing where I'm like, God, ah, for crying out loud, when's it gonna stop? And they're like, All right, well, never. It's never gonna stop. Yeah. 
Like, and, and it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's freaking me out now that I'm 46 because I'm realizing, like, I'm like, oh shit, they're coming for me. And like, it doesn't matter how woke I get today, tomorrow, next week. Like, I'm Walt Disney at this point. Like, I've done my crimes. My steamboat willies on the internet. Like, like I can't get it off. I like I am problematic. I've been problematic for the first 40 years of my life. And the older I get, the more problematic it's going to be. There's a whole nother generation coming. If I'm lucky enough to make it to 70, there's going to be uh, 20 year olds that are going to make you guys roll your eyes. That are going to be like, "This guy's Hitler!" Like, like watching my fucking shitty. Well, like, this is like like doing doing the improv shows that we do with Who's Live. Uh, like, uh, there's a bit that we do where we uh, we bring a a woman out of the audience and we ask her about her life and I sing a song to her. And I used to make it way more kind of flirtatious and romantic and and we did a show in Madison, Wisconsin on the day of the Kavanaugh confirmation and on the uh, the Capitol steps uh, in Madison. Have I said this before? Have we, have we spoken? About I think this? you. I think you told this story that you've, you that you that you 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 checked yourself and before you riggedy wrecked. Well, your... we we got a review that day. We're standing out there and, and hearing all these stories, and everybody got up and got a microphone and told their stories about all the shit that they've gone through, and it was pretty heavy. And uh, then I had to go do an improv show, and it's five white guys on stage uh, doing a show the day that fucking Kavanaugh was confirmed. And it was a triggery day for a lot of people. And we got a review from a woman who just fucking hated us. And I dig it, because that was a bad day for womankind and for lots of people. Um, but I've, I've had to voluntarily adjust the way that I approach that one improv game um, because it's like it's just like everything is just in, in for all the good reasons and for every possible reason things have shifted into a way that like what used to be hilarious is not in, 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 in the way that it used to be even just a few months ago uh, and there's ways to do it and still be funny but without doing the other thing yeah, before I got me tooed, uh, uh, you got I, like me three, didn't you? <laughs> I think I got me one and a half. To, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I, even before that, like on the you know when the when the Weinstein uh, kind of like water table uh, did whatever water tables do. I don't. I don't I'm not nautical, um, but. Um, <laughs> But I, I remember, like, kind of like, okay, all right, now let's examine ourselves. Let's be aware of what's going on. And I remember running in my through my head for like the first time in my life. I was just sort of in jail. I was like, whether it's on stage, at the workplace, it, with strangers, anybody. It was kind of like because it started with me going like, okay, what about that? What about that relationship? Um, and, and and stumbling upon the idea of like. Well, were you? Were you? Did it? Would it matter? Was it like? Oh, is it, and doing all this negotiation in my head, and then I was like, uh, something made me go. Well, why don't you look at it this way? What? Oh, what? What if it was uh, this guy that you had the same set of circumstances with? Like swapped out the woman in my head for a guy, and then was like, Ugh. like, like, like all of a sudden was like, wait, no, I would. It, it, the guy would have been like, what are you doing? Stop. Or if, or people would have just been like, what? what's with you? Or, or I would have been like, what's with myself? And then kind of like bl blossoming out in my head going like, oh God, every Dunkin' Donuts cashier, anybody, like like in any time, because there's a lot of stuff that like also part of growing up, don't you, don't you feel like you came of an age where you were like actually, a lot of it was like absolutely not anything but like learning to be uh, actually kind and uh, um, charming or funny or you know what i mean like 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 part of being a man like and becoming confident it was like and you'd get you get it was involved like sexualizing like i don't mean sexualizing like yeah. the activity i mean like gender wise but like like kind of like like getting like like sort of like a, a, acknowledging the differences between you and the person you're talking to it, it w was like it, it it was like the equivalent of like learning to use a flathead screwdriver. Like you were graduating from Fisher Price to Sears tools and it felt benevolent. It didn't, it felt the opposite of predatory. It felt gracious and chivalrous and charming and all this stuff. And, but then you look back on it and you go, okay, but now these kids are ready for 
like wh whether that was right or wrong or it doesn't really matter now the kids are ready they're like okay but let's wipe that clean like don't talk to anybody uh uh in a way that acknowledges like anything that you perceive with your eyeballs period like just see them as a fucking like tennis ball on a stick and like <laughs> um get ready for you know be be ai compatible in your dealings and you will that then you don't have to worry about it you'll you talk about what scares you talk about what you know and don't all of those areas are problem areas and i think that is what's frustrating for people is they're like oh what so i can never do this i can never do that like yeah you can't it's like yeah it's frustrating it is like a bunch of stuff that you did last week like it's not on the table anymore and it's frustrating and embarrassing and i do and i do think that like the the problem the the perpetuating cycle thing is that the pe people don't they don't understand that the idea of correcting people or or hoping that people get better it shouldn't be such a gleeful activity because that's you're not you're not going to make any new converts like there it's like they that's exactly their nightmare so all, the only way that you learn that you that 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 it's it's sex worker instead of prostitute now there's no hogwarts for that you're there to, if you're 48 years old you you could yeah. be the best person if, in the if, world if I, if I went back through all of all of harmontown there's a thousand things I, I would take back and not not have said again because they're not they weren't funny then and they wouldn't be funny now like it's it's like there's so many there's, there's a couple of things I've said on Whose Line that, that, that aired on TV that I would I'll go, oh, no, I'd never fucking say that again because it's like, it doesn't, it, I don't think it was funny then, but, but I was allowed to get away with it then. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's why it's, it's almost like karma because it's like, how, how, how much glee have we taken when we were 18 and 25? Of like the idea that, uh, oh, there was some time long ago when that you could scroll back in the microfiche and like, aha. Kleenex had a racist ad, like, and we felt superior. Like, I'd be like, ah ha, like, 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 I caught you, you know, when you would dig that stuff up. It's just, it was just like more of a difficult thing to do, and it was more profound back then. I was like, but we, it, it and then that makes me shudder now because it's like, oh, <laughs> you're, you're next, like, you're. You're Frigidaire, you're Disney, you're you're just you're an institution if you're lucky. Remember Disney? You walked down Main Street and there was a they're gone now. There was curtains that had swastikas on them. But I think it was swastikas in the old like like Native American thing where it wasn't like a like a like that's sure an old, yeah that's, that's an old symbol. But they were there. I remember if you <laughs> fucking see a fucking swastika curtain up in the Main Street. That's wild, man. Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember how Mr. Toad's Wild Ride would take you through Alsace Lorraine? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you you had to go invade the Sudetenland and uh, <laughs> and and annex the Alsace Lorraine. Fucking Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I don't know if you guys have ever fucking been on this thing. It's great because it's a story of a bunch of animals uh, led by a toad. And uh, there's Ratty and there's uh, whatever, the Famoli and whatnot. And you go and you start at a bar, then you go get some pie, and then you go to hell. Because <laughs> it's, about, it's yeah. about drunk driving, well, right? Yeah, you go to jail, then you get hit by a tr You escape jail, you get hit by a train, you die, you go to hell, and then it's the end of the ride. And right. I think it's just, it's just a, a cautionary tale about the <laughs> being British. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, we, we, we went on, it was fucking freezing. It's the coldest I've ever been in Los Angeles or Orange County. It was just dead cold outside. We went on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride a bunch and, uh, because it's one of the rides that doesn't have cameras inside. So we all had flasks of booze. So when you go inside and you, you get in the car and you go inside, you could just drink on it. And uh, then at the end, you go to hell and there's heat lamps. And this, this guy that was running the ride, he's like, you guys have been on this ride like 12 times. Like, what is going on? I go, it's warm in hell. And he goes, oh, genius. <laughs> it's like, we're only here for the drinking and the, and the heat lamp in hell. You know, it sucks. Fucking submarines now that it's Finding Nemo. Boo. Yeah. B to the O to the O. -O, -O. There's no submarine in that movie. <sighs> That's well, they fucking can't, terrible. they can't update it. My Adderall came loose in my pocket. Oh no! Oh no! Your oh, pockets it, it, it just fell out. So I, saw, I saw one hit the ground. 
You got a loose Adderall on the carpet now. All right. Well, three second rule. It's not cause a. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's actually Reeves a one and a half second rule. It's Keanu Reeves, you never, Adderall. you never go to, you never go to the floor for drugs. That's a good rule. Should I just eat the powder? What, the, what would that do? It'll help. <sighs> Am I gonna finish this script tonight? Tonight? Which yeah. script? Which one is this? I can't say. I'm not allowed is, to say. This is the Aqu- Aquaman two, right? Three. <laughs> I can neither confirm Aquaman. nor deny. You know what? You fucking. I don't know if you guys travel a bunch and go to hotels, but you ever go to a hotel and you turn on the TV? Yeah. Usually the fucking remote doesn't make anything happen. The remotes, no. the hotels suck ass. And then you turn it on and you have the fucking first thing you get, Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez. And he's talking to you about Aquaman Extra. for fucking ten minutes. Hmm. Well, the crab people, you know, and so on. Yeah. 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 yeah what know. is it about uh, water people. that uh, is uh, dumb? <laughs> is it just because we left it? Like we're, we're like, oh, that's so dumb. Like uh, Little Mermaid got out of there. Yeah, but at the, at the price of what? Losing her voice. Yeah, I know, but we're like, don't, I don't want to watch, we don't want to watch a movie like they, they I don't like that she's like, here's my, I've got Spongebob here's flies my, here's in the my, Here's that, my but. beef with fucking, <laughs> a Spongebob movie's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Little Mermaid, she knows the word trove, but she doesn't know the word street. <laughs> like, what, walking around, on the, what, what do you call it again? Oh, street. But she knows trove. Yeah, like a treasure trove. Yeah, fucking like what was so it's a weird she doesn't know what she doesn't yeah. know what they're called feet. That doesn't track. It's yeah. stupid. Wait, what do you why not? Str- a street a street is a terrestrial cultural yeah, thing. Yeah, but the trove is like like, like a how, trove is there's fucking troves underwater that she's f- very familiar with it. It's like nothing to her. You get a trove in your quinceañera when you're a mermaid. Right. Like it, <laughs> They're like, here's your trove, here's your fucking uh, uh, coconut the word- bra or whatever, your seashell get bra. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 Flipping it, your fins, you don't get too far. No, come on. I bet if you jumping, check out the, she knows dancing. She, I, I do, do mermaids dance? And they, they don't know the word street. I'm I not gonna. I'm not gonna let you uh, uh, revisit the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I just think that's a weird thing. She, the, also, very conveniently, the two words that she doesn't remember r- rhyme. Street, street oh, God, feet. God. Listen, oh, you, you no. listen to yourself. Listen to what you've become. Way to go, Andrew, Andrew Lloyd, whoever fucking wrote that. Andrew Lloyd Webber. What? Uh, that, that's, that's, see, now that's a good f- fish joke. Because his web, toes are web. Because webbed feet, you know, fucking. Like the Swamp Man. You yeah. Know, you guys know about the Swamp Man? Yeah. He has webbed feet. I have webbed feet. Do you guys know that? Do you really? Yeah. I got two webbed toes. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think church has got a web foot too. Huh? Hell yeah! You know what they say? Church, about you got, guys you got, with you got a web toe, right? Syndactyly. Yeah, you, that's you got what, what I got. I got the second and third two on ones. each foot. Yeah, that's what I got. Twins. <laughs> oh hell yeah! <laughs> we can swim. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you guys know my times? <laughs> the fly. It probably doesn't swimming? really help with swimming, right? Not by oh, any, no. Like, even if it was a little bit, like, all Olympic teams would have, like, all people with this. Yeah, I mean, te- swimming is, like, all technique. It's really hard. But they, like, shave their arms and stuff. I mean, like, every, you know, you would think, like, like they're very conscious of, like, every little detail. Yeah. So I would think, I would assume that if having, like, a webbed toe. I think pinching your toes together approaches the, the resistance of webbed toes. Church, have you found that your webbed uh, toes have given you an advantage in the pool? Of course. Yes. <laughs> you know what to say about guys with uh, webbed feet? Webbed hands. Yeah. Right? Is that what you're going to say? I was going to say webbed dick, but... Oh. <laughs> webbed gloves. Webbed dick. <laughs> I think all dicks are webbed. Yeah. <laughs> All dicks are webbed. It's true. It's like the spitting dinosaur from Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's like the frill that. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Nigel likes to go under the covers, like habitually. He likes to sleep like right on my thigh. He likes to go under the covers, and he sleeps right here, like where RoboCop's gun would be. Hell yeah. 
but then every once in a while I like I will fart. I will I will I will I will wake up with the uh morning uh, uh tumescence. And then morning I will missile. I will I will I will pull down my meundies and kind of like let let Tim Allen syndicate. <laughs> you gotta. I, I, I'm not sure I follow that. Too. Well, it's a, I, I, that's because I coined it. It's a new way of saying. Uh, <laughs> I was quite proud of it, but uh, you know, I just, just you know, you get it, you're all you're all bunched up in your undies, and then you right. got like the thing, and then I, I just I just like to my science of it is like you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it the world's problem before I've let it like like wear itself out. Maybe you know, I just just. Like I think it's like a self, it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. If you're a guy, you're sleeping in briefs, and then this happens in the mornings, and then like the first thing that's happening to your wiener is it's like encountering resistance, which your according to your wiener is like encouragement. Your wiener's like that's what I'm all about. Like I want something to fight me. Like like, like I was like, that's 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 what that's 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 called rubbing, and it's like well no, it's also called like you're you're misbehaving and you're in the way and we're trying to sleep. So I will I will just pull my my meundies down to like knee level like and just just let it let it just let the let the flagpole like write it out. Yeah, so, so that it'll stop getting encouragement and it'll just it'll just feel itself like like it'll just Amelia Earhart into but, but the now you have a Bermuda Triangle. It'll just be like just be free, go ahead and dream but like like leave us out of it. But n- but now you have a uh, a RoboCop dog. But then the dog, dog will come and like like it's like no you can't come under and then like the dog's like very insistent and then I'm like I got a hard on like uh, yeah anyways but that's all. Wait, 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 what? So what happened? Well, nothing. I'm not. So gonna, you're fucking you're fucking Nigel. No, is what no, you're no. saying? No, I'll just like the dog. I was like the dog doesn't understand. It's like no, there's a, the, the, you can't you can't come under here now. You're gonna be sleeping next to my hard dick and it's different. And the dog doesn't understand that. And probably, if anything, given its proclivity for munching on my underwear, I don't even want to know what would happen if my, you know, the generator of my underwear's uh, uh, various um, <clears throat> scents were, like, right there for the freebasing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to cross that threshold because I'm very happy. I feel I'm <laughs> one of those people that, like, I don't need to, so you, you have to push ask- the limits. I'm not. It's not. A, it's not an ethical choice. It's like it's more of like a. I'm happy right now. I don't want to know more. So I'm not Alistair Crowley. <laughs> so you have to physically remove. Nigel. No, he's not down there. If he was down there already, I wouldn't. I wouldn't release the Kraken. I. <laughs> it's 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 just like so he'll 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 come back. Like he he likes to go down, and then he like he comes back up, and he splutes, and he airs himself out. And then he goes back under. He's, splutes. That's yeah, when the, they, yeah. they do those little chicken legs. They lay down and put their legs kind of down instead of under their body. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, and they make like a little chicken. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I, like, I call it the uh, the submarine with like, like 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 a torpedo site. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he'll come. You know. So, but then it's like just, uh, that, just, that's all. Just fuck your dog. No, I don't want to fuck my. Have dog. you tried talking to him? S- stop being such a prude and fuck Nigel. Just a fucking <laughs> fuck my dog. throw the dog a bone. Oh boy, that's good, but it's not. <laughs> it's like it's hard to appreciate. That's what she said. <laughs> I was like, Levy, do you think like so? What am I gonna get fired? Can I like? I didn't turn on the script, and he's like, Oh, you could still write it tonight. Why don't you write he's it? He's like the colonel to my Elvis. Do you have it on your phone? Can, can we can we write the fi- the final page right now? Oh yeah, I'm down to one page. That's yeah. I'm a I'm a real perfectionist. Just want that one page to be right. <laughs> how, how, the how, end or the end? How, yeah. Uh, <laughs> question mark or no question mark? It's <laughs> uh, how, how far do you have to go? I'm not telling you that. Those records are sealed. Okay. I uh, got gotcha. you. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm almost done. All right, Jack. <laughs> Rapke. I'm done. I'm almost done. I might die. I'm almost done. I'm never doing this again. It's just one draft. Keep going. 
Keep oh, God. going. My, I can't believe my Uber driver came into the show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I, I had an Uber it's driver. Not, it's not the same. I know I told you that our jobs were similar. You can't, it's, but it's, you, you, you were like, I don't want to go through Hancock Park. I'm like, just go. And, you then, you, my, and you, then you're like, okay, thank you. What's what's wrong with you? I'm like, I can't figure out why Superman would eat this apple. And you're, and you're like, just write it. My Lyft driver tonight had the, the best name. His name was Unique. Unique. Hmm. They're all fake now. People using fake names. Is that, you think so? Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are. A lot of people... <laughs> get their accounts banned and they make new fake accounts to keep driving for the companies. It's, I don't know how that works. It's just a draft. You're just a draft. Damn. I already know it's just a draft. I can't. It's not. The problem runs deeper than that, man. Yeah. You're a Flash expert? I was there a couple weeks. Oh, the Flash Oh, guy. Flash expert. What's you your name the, again? Jacob. Jacob. The Flash would be able to Flash run so fast. I'm not. I'm not hung up on any flash parts, but thank you. And Jeez. also, like as a flash guy, it's like, yeah, well, that's his solution to everything. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I bet. I'm sure Barry Allen's screenplays suck. And, and 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 again, it's not the goal is not to not write a sucky screenplay. Like I got deeper problems than that. I just for me, it's like it's like uh, there's something there's something like like just leave me alone, everybody. Yeah, I don't I, even know why you guys brought this up. I don't think you have the gut, <laughs> I don't think you have the guts to finish this thing. Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> like, like I'm not. Yeah, like everybody, uh, someone's gonna come in with a whole new take. Why don't you just write it? Oh, wow, jeez, holy cow! <laughs> why do you do it? Why, why did you? Why, you could have been. Uh, you you could have been happy three months ago. Or, yeah, or like you could have been like a like a soccer player. You could have oh. been. Uh, a, I could have stayed a dishwasher, a, a deep sea welder. For the amount of 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 people I got to like me, I could have stayed a dishwasher. <laughs> I did take that inventory lately. I was like, geez, you know, when all is said and done, I basically am disappointing people every bit as much as when I was washing their dishes. But now I have like millions of dollars. I'll take it. It's just kind of funny how I didn't want that part. I just I was like, well, what, I can't, well, people like me. Yeah. Well, because you wash dishes bad. Well, and I'll do with the, what do I do good? All right, I'll do what I know. Yeah, the guy goes to the community college and does the thing. Oh, we like it. We like it. Yeah, well, right, well maybe you'll really like this. Ugh, you're weird. Uh, he thinks I'm weird too. Here's his voicemail. Whoa, what are you doing? I'll go over here and do this then. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, you're Nazis. No one likes you. No one likes you. Where is season four? I don't know. I don't know. Why, why don't you like me? It's not my fault. Like, 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 just like me. I don't, but I don't want you to like me anymore. You're dumb. Hate all of you. All right, so uh, just uh, see you next week. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Right. We did it. Spencer Crittenden. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. Your mayor, Dan Harmon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Drive fast and take chances. Get any of that? It's a good show.